Welcome back to Source Fit Nerd, I'm Sam Basher. And I'm Phil Molina. Today, we want to talk to you about the future. And what is the first thing you think of when I say the future? Teleportation. Well, no, uh, what else? Space travel. N no. Human to dog telepathy. <laughs> How about wireless power? Oh, kind of like Wi-Fi. Exactly, ish. Uh, so you say you walk into a room and oh, look at that, you got a little vibration in your pocket because your phone is now charging. <gasps> How'd that happen? For that answer, we turn to the makers of dreams and wonder, Disney. Hey! Except, except it's still gonna be us talking. Oh. Yeah. Disney research has just unveiled a way to power a room full of devices without having to plug anything in. Sure, it's still in the prototype phase, but come on, it's the future. Think of the possibilities. When looking at the history of developing new tech, the prototype stage is never pretty. The layout of this room actually is not ideal for a normal house, at this stage at least. Mainly because you need a giant copper pipe in the middle of the room and all of your walls need to be replaced with aluminum panels, but hey, that ain't too bad. Kind of sounds like you're turning your room into an oven. Oh, I wonder what happens in a lightning storm. Hmm. You know what, let's, let's, let's learn about how to make one of these rooms, just cause. Okay, I do not think we have the skills or resources to build something like this safely, but let's pretend. Say you have a room in your house already built with aluminum walls and a copper pipe running through it, as you do. Next thing you wanna do is insert 15 capacitors into a section of the pipe. Once these capacitors are powered up, they will set the resonant frequency of the room and isolate the electric fields. So this process forces a current to travel through the pole, the ceiling, the walls, and the floor, which in turn creates a magnetic field that circulates throughout the room. Now you're gonna to wanna to set up a signal generator and a power amplifier outside of the room and then hook that up to a drive coil which sits next to the copper pipe. This system is what powers the room. Now make sure that the frequency of the capacitors in your pole matches the frequency of your signal generator. And if it does, boom, you got power flowing through your room. Ooh, swamp pack, ah, oh, shit. That's the swamp packs from the, that video up there. Mm -hmm. Let's do fun facts, fun fact. Fun fact, this technology isn't actually all that new. Nikola Tesla actually demonstrated wireless power multiple times. One of his most impressive feats had him transmitting over 100 million volts. Over 26 miles. That's almost a whole marathon. Tesla was able to power over 200 light bulbs and a motor. Makes this room kind of seem lame in comparison. Yeah, but also at that time, we didn't know what all that prolonged exposure to that much power would do to your body. Flashlight. No, not, no, flashlight. Come on, there's no, no flashlight. No. All right, so while we are downright excited by any and all progress toward actual future tech becoming real, even the bad stuff. I wanna meet Mr. Terminator. Uh, T-800, Mr. Terminator is his father. We thought it was only responsible for us to discuss some of the drawbacks of this technology, at this particular moment at least, and also some of the greater concerns that have totally not been addressed yet. First up, the wireless field broadcast smack in the middle of the AM radio spectrum. And in the grand scheme of things, I'm totally okay with losing out on the exciting razzmatazz of local government meetings, but also, the way the room works, it very likely might behave as a Faraday cage. A Faraday cage or a Faraday shield is an enclosure that has an electric charge running through a metallic mesh and blocks the penetration of external electromagnetic fields. So in other words, you might be getting wireless power inside of this room, but you probably aren't gonna get good wireless signal from outside the room. Hey, what do you know you can see this in the very video they shared. Sure, it's cool that the iPhone is getting charged wirelessly, but also less cool, look, it's got no service. Well, you could always run a data cable to your device. Oh yeah, that's my favorite kind of wireless. Moving on, the actual power that you get in this room, it's not exactly life altering. At least not life altering in a good way, but we'll get back to that. Right, in terms of usable energy for your devices, we're talking about 1900 watts of power, so not exactly a ton. Right, like enough to power a blow dryer. And maybe a coffee machine. No, actually, not together. Oh. Ooh, a blender? Nope. Ooh, okay, uh, three and a half personal fans. Ah, there you go, yes. A blow dryer to dry your luscious mane and three and a half personal fans to cool your luscious body. And that's... It. <laughs> and what's a little worse is that this thing is pretty massively inefficient. Citing the article, apparently we're only getting about 40% of what is being broadcast. So those 1900 watts are actually closer to putting out 5,000 watts of power. That's like plugging in 10 refrigerators in this one room, but only four of them can keep your food cold. And the other part that is really inefficient is that you can't meter out this power. It doesn't just work when you plug something in and it doesn't limit itself to what devices need. This thing constantly broadcasts all of its power all at the same time permanently. Sure, you could theoretically shut down the entire external power source for this room, but the point is, if you intend to use this room at all, like even just to power a nightlight, boom, it's full blast. 10 refrigerators worth of 
power constantly the entire time. There's no medium setting. That sounds expensive. But also delightfully dangerous. And this is where the other kind of life altering comes in. Because say you are in this room with your tiny little nightlight. It's adorable. Aww. It only uses up, what, three watts of power. Ooh. The remaining 1,897 watts of usable power, they don't also go into the nightlight that would murder it. They also don't just hang out waiting for something else to go into. So if you're the only other thing in that room, no, you're not gonna get electrocuted. <sighs> but you are gonna be the recipient of all that rogue energy. Cool. Not rogue, rogue. Flashlight. Why the flash clip? It didn't even make sense there. It's just all that loose energy looking for a home and that's probably gonna be you. And so while that isn't automatically dangerous for you, you probably definitely wanna limit the exposure as much as you could. I feel like condoms would help here. I, do, I don't. Why, they're rubber. They're not rubber. Well, okay, that's just another video that we gotta make. But anyway, Disney says it's designed this room to be within the safe parameters of exposure, but it's not like, oh, this is so safe, you'll hardly ever notice it. It's more like, I mean, your skin can technically tolerate this amount without cooking, and a little more than this, and yes, your skin will cook, so try not to get too far past that point. But yeah, legally, you won't immediately cook. That's all a direct quote from the press release, by the way. Right, and it gets a lot worse when you get close to that copper pole. The video tells us that the safe distance is beyond a radius of 46 centimeters. So that actually means there is a three foot diameter in your room around this pole that is totally unsafe. Do not stand within three feet of this shiny pole. Definitely do not touch this pole. And you know that's gonna be a problem when you have someone who sees a pole and just has to dance on it. It's my gift and my curse. Ah, uh, but hey, who doesn't love strippers covered in electrical burns, huh? Plus I'd get to pay them with band-aids. Anyway, considering you can't really retro fit existing rooms in your house to work like this, we're only talking about new buildings that could take advantage of this. So with that and all the other drawbacks, as of now, it's looking like we're not gonna see practical usage of this tech for something like 20 or 30 years. But I'm still glad they're working on it. I hate when we stop trying. Bring on the burns if it means that we're gonna get to real wireless power someday. I specifically want truly wireless VR headsets to be a thing because then I can forget who I am and live inside of them forever. I'm what Black Mirror warned us about. Man, you're definitely gonna be the one to meet Mr. Terminator. Lucky. Oh, we forgot our favorite of the weird side effects of this thing. Oh yeah, ghosts. Okay, so there's no real science backing it, but many ghost hunters explain that the strange feeling of uneasiness, anxiety, and like something is watching you, you know, that whole haunted house feeling, it's actually just sensitivity to electromagnetic fields. So if that's true, hanging out in this room might not just cook you, it also make you feel like the souls of the dead are watching it happen. Oh, hey, at least you're not alone. Ghost friends. Oh, for sure. Actually, I'm trying to get something serious going on with this lady ghost that lives in my laundry room. I think it's going pretty well. That's really great. She also could just be an old lady that lives in your building. No, oh, completely possible. I say ghost because it's more romantic that way. Aww. What do you guys think? Should I pop the question to my ghost girlfriend? About wireless charging. Ah, right. A lot of people are saying that this is a dumb idea for people that are too lazy to plug things in. Do you agree? No. Stupid people. Also, do you think it's worth trying technology like this even if it is kind of risky? Or do you want to wait for them to roll it out when it's 100% safe, even if that is decades away? Hmm, let us know. Also, hey, fun announcement time. Want to hang out with us and watch a movie? Plus more people? Well, lucky for you, we're putting on a special screening of Jordan Peele's new thriller, Get Out in Los Angeles, this Thursday. Tickets are limited. Only a select few will be able to attend. Could it be you? Could it be you? Hmm. Do you live in Southern California? Do you 18? Are you like movies? If so, head over to DeFrancoMovieNight.com to enter for a chance to win a pair of tickets for you and a plus one. So generous. Mm -hmm. Give this video a like, share it, subscribe, and watch more from us at YouTube.com slash Sam Basher. And YouTube.com slash Philip Molina. He just dropped an in-depth analysis of what made Lego Batman work so well. It's pretty cool. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Let's stick our dicks in some power sockets. That's what I took <laughs> away from this video. Also, it's called grounding the hose or plugging in. Directed by none other than freaking Wes Craven. I actually remember watching this movie as a kid and being like, what am I watching? But also it's amazing. And there might be a character who's similar to Trump. Maybe. Maybe.